So I'm going to talk about something this week. I wasn't planning on talking about, but I had a family event this weekend. I have some little nieces and nephews, and they reminded me of what I feel inside a lot, that everyone, every one of us is a unicorn. Everyone is a unicorn. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that before we start getting our horns chopped down, look, I tried to get my, my unicorn horn as tall as it would today. Before we start getting it chopped down by conditioning, by education, by family influence, by peer influence, by society, we have this uniqueness within inside of us that we come to this world with. So I'm gonna doodle to connect now on these concepts, but I might be a little bit chatty because I'm pretty passionate about this message that we are all unique. And so are we unicorns? Maybe you might say, hey, but unicorns aren't real. And I wanna challenge you to maybe say, are they? Because I've been a trauma therapist and I've worked with people who've had a lot of really hard things happen to them in their lives. And with that, they have this feeling that they're not even real. So maybe this whole unicorn not being real Am I real? Is this part of me real? Or maybe this part of me is the real part of me? What's to say what's real or not? Let's just get curious and explore as we doodle to connect. Before we go on, it would really help my channel if you could like or subscribe or even leave me a comment. So as we come to this world, I believe we're more of ourselves than with each year, each moment that continues to go on and go by. We go through our twos and we're told no and our unicorn horn gets blocked down. We're shaped into a gender. Our unicorn horn gets blocked down. Having to learn instead of play, our unicorn horn gets knocked off a little bit. Every situation where we're forced and we're streamlined into something that doesn't seem to quite like fit in that moment makes us cut it down a little bit more and we lose a little bit of our uniqueness. And then we go to school and our peers who've also been raised up and conditioned by their own families, their own church systems, their own extended families and grandparents and beliefs and cultural beliefs and values from generations ago. And then we hear their opinions and we feel like we have to hide our unicorn horn, hide our uniqueness, hide our authentic self. A lot of time when we start hiding, we can start to feel shame about 
who we are, that something's wrong with us for having these desires or these beliefs or feeling like we want to express in a different way. Isn't it hard to be a unicorn and unique in a society where we're still compared on so many levels? We're compared on our gender. We're compared on who we love, who we want to hold hands with or kiss, what the color of our skin is, where we're from, what kind of car we drive, if we have money or food to feed our belly. The list goes on and on and on and on, and we feel like we can't be that authentic self because we're just trying to survive and find a place in the world. And neuroscience research tells us that all of our brains are different. So how are we supposed to fit in these boxes or in these classrooms that are designed for one student avatar? your true self as you begin to know and remember actually who you are that friendship that you have and will have with yourself is the most important friendship that you will have finding a way to embrace and hold and love and care for all of you will help to build that container of strength and resilience and you might start to see your horn grow again and it can poke back if someone says what you like pink or what you're wearing pearls and you're a man or you're with that person who the f cares don't we have bigger things to worry about I'll tell you. Okay, soapbox. I want to read a little passage out of the book, Heal Thyself by Saki Santorelli. This is a, called Lessons on Mindfulness in Medicine. It's actually a roomy poem, so it's roundabout. It comes from this book, but I just pulled this book out. Um, two kinds of intelligence. There are two kinds of intelligence. One acquired as a child in school memorizes facts and concepts from books and from what the teacher says, collecting information from the traditional sciences as well as from the new sciences. With such intelligence, you rise in the world, you get ranked ahead or behind others in regard to your competence and retaining information. You stroll with this intelligence in and out of fields of knowledge, getting always more marks on your persevering tablets. There is another kind of tablet, one already completed and preserved inside of you. The spring overflowing its spring box, a freshness in the center of the chest. This other intelligence does not turn yellow or stagnate. It's fluid 
and it doesn't move from outside to the inside through the conduits of plumbing learning, the second knowing is a fountainhead from within you moving out. So that was two kinds of intelligence from Rumi, right? We come with this second kind of knowledge already. Kids are beaming with it. So smart, curious, inquisitive, resourceful, wise, loving, caring, compassionate. And then the first kind of intelligence comes in where we have to memorize colors and numbers and letters and rote learning and all of this stuff and all of that other intelligence starts to go down. My challenge for you this week is to remember you have that second kind of intelligence within you, right? It's already that well inside of you. And you might feel it and you might get like tingly inside and you might get nervous as you start to feel it because you start to think, you know, what is this? And what will someone think? And they'll think that I'm trying to be a know-it-all or too spiritual or something. And again, who the F cares? Because this is your journey and you are worthy and you are enough. And it's the best thing to learn to befriend your whole self, all of you. I know it hurts when our uniqueness is challenged, when who we are at our core is made to feel like it's not good enough. And to grow our resilience, we have to put in some work to be able to really be the ones to believe in ourselves and not wait for the outside world to provide that validation. So I have this other video where you can grow your garden of resilience and I just want to offer it to you to take a look at. You might like it. Until next time, remember to keep on doodling to connect with your whole self. I'll see you really soon.